For ages, the many factions of Gilinor have fought for their gods, hoping to prove that their deity is superior. One of the newer factions, the Godless, takes a particularly unique stance in these conflicts. But how was the Godless faction formed? Who are their more notable members? And what have they done since the return of gods on Gilinor? I'm Iris Galaxy Shark, and this is RuneScape Lore. For many years, while the 4th and 5th Ages were in progress, there was no godly presence on Gilinor, and the world stayed relatively peaceful. Skirmishes still occurred between members of different factions who were still devoted to their gods, but none were to the scale of the god wars that had been put to an end previously. Because of this relative peace, few took great offence to the concept or worship of gods. Unfortunately, as the end of the 5th Age approached, this would no longer be the case. When Guthix was assassinated, the world was sent into a frenzy, with the Guthixian druids being affected greatly. Many came to appreciate the true teachings and beliefs of their late god, and Kalkumax spreading the idea that Guthix did not want to be worshipped. Instead, the god of balance simply wanted to create a world suitable for his people, and then leave it to them, so that they could live in peace and harmony with one another. This especially resonated with Bane, a druid who had for many years questioned his ideals and religion of his people. Bane had been confused that Guthix desired equality and encouraged mortals to see eye to eye, but was also, due to his godly power, superior in every way. After hearing the preachings of Kakumax, Bane finally understood what Guthix had wanted, a world where mortals live equally and aren't dictated over by a god. Following this epiphany, he left the druids, seeing no reason to stay and worship he who did not want to be worshipped. He travelled elsewhere, possibly towards Lumbridge. It was later pointed out that his time as a druid may have been cut short even without him voluntarily leaving, as he closely studied portal magic and blood potions, both of which were taboo in the culture of Gothixian druids, and may have eventually led to his expulsion from the Order. On his travels, he spoke with Kara Mare, a ruthless adventurer who was touring Kandarin and leaving a trail of blood in her wake. The two had been acquaintances for some time and often spoke regarding world issues as well as their own adventures or discoveries. Later communications around this time would be especially important though, as they would mark the beginning of Gilinor's newest faction. Bean would propose his idea to Kara Mare, saying to quote, This world, Gilinor, is for mortals. It is not for gods, since they can find no peace with one another let alone us. Gods bring war, no war, and our war. It is mortals alone that can find peace, and as long as they share a common ground, and that common ground is a defence against gods, so I want to gather like-minded people. I want to gather those who have a shred of doubt when they pray, who feel a tug of fear that the gods are returning, who question the right for gods to rule. I want to gather these people and form an alliance, change the minds of the populace, standing firm and silent against the gods, I want the gods to be faced with a wall of resistance, and I want them to leave. Karamer agreed, and decided to join Bean's group, which he had called the Anti-Theists. The young adventurer was quick to suggest an alternative name however, disliking the rather confusing one that had been proposed originally. The name she suggested was of course, the Godless. During these communications, Karamer had formed an alliance with Ux, a demon that had somehow managed to free itself from the demonic pact that tied demons to Zaros and Zamorak. This alliance interested Bean, who realised that a being with control over the Abyss could vastly improve his portal magics. After a short while, a portal was opened near Lumbridge, which concerned Karamer and gave Ux a headache. Aiming to investigate and put an end to whatever was causing the demon such pain, the pair headed towards Lumbridge. Shortly after they arrived, the true purpose of the portal was revealed. As it turned out, Zamorak, the god of chaos, was going to use the portal to arrive in the area, where he could siphon the divine energy of Guthix. This, of course, led Saradomin to fight back, sparking the Battle of Lumbridge and leaving a huge crater just behind Lumbridge Castle. The godless, who had, thanks to Bean's preaching, become quite a sizeable organisation, decided to remain somewhat hidden, but not completely uninvolved in this war. Karamer oversaw the battle from the edge of the crater, while spies infiltrated the bases of both sides. While the godless avoided directly influencing the battle, they were prepared to contain it, should it spill out of the crater and into the neighbouring towns. When the battle finally ended, the faction resumed their normal lives, waiting until they would be needed again. 
It did not take long for them to appear though. After some deliberation, Bandos had finally decided to return to Gilnor and attempt to gain total control over the planet. This sparked a second conflict, this time between Bandos and Armadil. While the two deities channeled divine energy into their weapons, hoping to activate theirs first and eliminate their opponent, the godless took an incredibly tactical approach. It should be noted that Karamer had a very aggressive outlook on gods, and was willing to go as far as killing them to free mortals from their grasp. She then formed bands of godless scouts, assassins and spies, who attempted to stall whatever faction was winning. The aim of doing this was to make both gods complete their weapons at the same time, so that they would kill each other. They were of course unsuccessful, with only Bandos dying. As with before, the faction mostly disappeared after the battle ended, resuming their normal lives. A few more devoted members continued to preach their anti-theist beliefs in an attempt to grow the faction. This of course includes Bean and Kara Mare, the founding figures, but also Holstein, the emissary of the godless, who promoted their order to those who passed by the docks of Port Sarim. It was actually Holstein who successfully encouraged Zanuck, the cave goblin, to join the godless after she had chosen to abandon the Bandosians. In the following year, a third intergod battle began, so of course, Karamer and Holstein headed to the battleground to observe. Somehow, neither of them managed to realise the true magnitude, or lack thereof, of this battle. Marimbo and Braska Prime had decided to have a little game, seeing that all of the other gods were doing the same recruiting adventurers and facing off in a game to prove that their food was more delicious than the other. Kara Mer attempted to talk the gods out of their battle, but was eventually driven away after having food and monkey droppings thrown at her, alongside a flurry of insults. Holstein opted to stay, just in case the battle, or more accurately, the festivities, got out of hand. He achieved very little, aside from catching the eye of Marimbo, who found him rather attractive, in part because of his muscular build and lack of shirt. Before the faction became three years old, many more important beings had joined the cause. In general, they were former followers of a god, who had for some reason deemed it necessary to abandon their deity. This includes Fossil, the leader of the trolls who had been involved in a brief battle with his god, Bandos, just before his battle with Armadil. He refused to follow the tyrannical god and joined the godless instead. There is also Garlandia and Icene, who had refused to fight in Saradomen's army on her homeworld, Hallow. She was punished, having her wings ripped from her, an action that would normally result in death, as the Icene would not be able to migrate with the new seasons. Somehow, she survived the snow and harsh winter, although her skin was bleached white. Eventually, Garlandia and her newfound hatred of the warring gods arrived on Gilinor and joined the godless. It is often believed that Virago is a member of the Godless, but this is not actually the case. As a being of anima, he has no need for a faction or allegiance to any leader, as it would simply provide a distraction from his protection of Gilinor. That said, when the safety of the world is called into question and he is forced to take a side, Virago chooses to align himself with the Godless. Such a world-ending threat would eventually come in the form of Tusca, the World Eater. For once, the main factions of the world, in this case being the Godless, Ceridominists, Zamorakians and Armadillians worked together, rather than against one another, to prevent the boar-like god from destroying their home. After a month of effort, the magical barrier protecting Tusca was breached and Virago, representing the Godless as explained earlier, landed a killing blow onto the beast, sending her to the ground where she would slowly leak anima following her death. The back of Tusca was then taken as a sort of base for the godless, who remained there to defend the portal to Mazcab. They saw it as their responsibility to save Mazcab from gods who may attempt to reach them through the portal, but also prepared to defend Gilinor from whatever might come the other way. As with before, the members of the godless returned to their normal, god-free lives following this event, not being involved in any particularly important events until Seren called together a council of Gilinorians who aimed to put a stop to the threat of the Elder Gods. The Godless, as with all of the other factions, offered their services to build a garden meant to appease the Elder Choir, but were unwilling to work with certain other factions. Since the idea of the garden was scrapped and the Gods seemed somewhat dormant as of late, it does not seem likely that we will see Kara Mare, Bean, or any of the other Godless beings engage in any sort of conflict or particularly important event in the near future. With that, there is little else to say, so of course this video is coming to an end. 
Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about the faction who stand against even the gods. If you did, please consider subscribing to stay up to date with my future uploads. Once again, thank you for watching. I've been Aris Galaxy Shark, and I'll see you next time.